Hey everyone, today we're going to work on a marbled galaxy soap. As usual, you will see most of the products that I'm using up on the screen because I'm going to talk more about technique and a few other things as we go. Um, I will also most of the time have links in my description box. It, they may not be for every item I'm using. Um, so if you have questions about any particular thing you're seeing, um, let me know in the comments and I will try to find you. I can't always find the link uh, because if I uh, get thing, if, if I purchased something years ago, I may not remember where I purchased it, ah, purchased it from. But if um, I do get some of my items, especially my tools, um, and molds and such from Amazon. And if you've shopped Amazon a bit, you'll know that things are not always available or they'll be available from another company or something similar. So sometimes it's hard to find the exact thing that I have purchased, but I will do my best to try. Um, I do usually show you or, or put links to at least the uh, colorants and such that I am including and my fragrance oil, etc. Sorry, my voice is a little wonky today. It's just a little stuffy. Um, and that's, that's my story. So, uh, as you see here, this is my, this is my first layer. This is, I'm kind of calling this, I don't know, uh, this is a marbled layer, uh, layering technique. Um, and uh, that I really got to get the name nailed down with these because I've also called it um, wet layering because it is, and this one really is maybe a hybrid of those two. You'll see here I created that with kind of a swirl. I just did it at a um, fairly low temperature, like 122, 123, something like that. Nothing crazy. Um, but because I'm only pouring, uh, at most a quarter inch, um, for that layer, it cools very quickly. So you always have to take that into consideration. Um, up top, if you'll notice, I'm just showing you the little bluing technique real quick because this fragrance oil does discolor just a tiny bit and I'm using it anyway, because I want to show you that sometimes you can use it. It's not a color that discolors to a full brown. It's very, it just yellows a little bit. There's a small amount of vanillin in it. I used winter candy apple. Um, and please shop around when, if, if color is important to you and vanillin content is important to you, um, as that will yellow or brown your soaps, depending, um, you want to uh, look at variety of companies. They don't always have the same vanillin content, even if it's the same fragrance. So this one was, I think, about 1.5, 1.2. Um, it was fairly low. I usually don't like to go above 1%, but um, the black background helps quite a bit and lots of blues. If it goes a little bit yellow, which I'm pretty sure what you saw in the container is as much as it's going to yellow. Um, and that, that little drop of blue does help. It's not going to fog it. If your, if your soap is foggy, that's either your soap or, um, you overheated it or something like that because, uh, or, or the only, the only way fragrance oil can really make your soap look foggy or, you know, not see through um, is if it's, uh, overheated or if you, oh, I'm sorry, fragrance oil, if you didn't mix it in properly. So you want to mix it probably more than you think you should, especially if it doesn't look as clear as it did when you first pulled it off the heat source or out of the microwave or whatever, however you melt your soaps. Um, this is the first little layering technique here. I'm trying to stick with what's going on. One of the most important things I think about this layering technique is you pour a layer of soap um, and add your colorants in little little bits, but you have to work quickly because then you want to add more soap on top before it's set up. And I'm adding, in these layers, I'm adding anywhere 
really more like an eighth of an inch. And then when I go to pour the second part of the layer to break the color up and help it to kind of move along, um, it equals about a quarter inch, maybe less, uh, depending. Um, I don't measure these by weight. Um, I measure them by how thick I want my soap to be. My recommendation to you is that you uh, look at your mold and determine how thick do you want your bars of soap to be. Um, in, a, in a bar soap that is um, done from the bottom up, face up, instead of like in a loaf mold where you're going, um, where the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the top of the soap is the top of the soap bar. And in these, you're, you're more looking face up as you do these. You can do face down. I don't like to do that with these because I like to get a, an overall picture. It's not a, it's not a specific um, design. Uh, it's not like I'm, <coughs> excuse me, creating a landscape or something where the hills have to be here and the trees have to be there, that kind of thing. It's more abstract art. And so um, I just kind of like to see how it's going, make sure I have, you know, enough of this color showing. Is it starting to be too heavy on that color? Am I still seeing some of that background, etc.? So it helps me to do this one face up, um, which is, uh, for me, I trim them. I trim the edges with a, <coughs> excuse me, with a, um, a vegetable peeler as you'll see in the end, and that helps anything that's a little wonky on the sides. And you'll see I don't really fuss about that too much because I know I'm going to shave off the sides um, just a little bit at an angle. Um, and it does help with any of those little drips you see going down the side um, and just cleans it all up. It also can help if you, when you're cutting soaps like this, because they're a little tricky, to cut, at least for me, I'm not super coordinated. Um, if you put your knife down and then you have to move it just a tiny bit and that little bit of a um, line shows, you can, um, you know, you, you can shave that off <laughs> uh, if it's not too far in. Um, what you see me doing here is an experiment. So I was playing around. It didn't end up like I wanted, like not at all. This is not what I intended with this part of it. It did end up really cool and I like the way it came out like a lot. Um, you basically end up just seeing some little um, images uh, of planets, little circles that kind of, I don't know, it reminds me, I don't, the, the wording on this is probably incorrect, but it reminds me of like a star map or something you'd see in a science fiction movie that comes up in the middle of the air like a hologram or something. It's not like an actual real image of a planet. As you see here, I lost some of the footage just for a second. Our camera went off. And so I'm, you missed, all you missed was me putting in the other circles. I, since I was experimenting, I didn't put as many as I probably would have liked if I'd planned this out. I definitely didn't push that larger ring down in far enough. Um, I would recommend if you try doing this, and these are just little cutters from Amazon that come in, I think about 12, 12 sizes. I don't know. There's a bunch available on Amazon if you look. Um, I wouldn't put it in while it's melted, while the soap is melted, unless it's right away. Um, because I put it in after one of the layers and it was still soft, but it was... Um, not really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It wasn't completely solidified. So it kind of bent the, the edges in a little and I was worried to push through too much because I didn't want to destroy the pattern I just made. I should have just waited till the whole thing was solidified, which is what I then did with the rest of them when I realized what that was going to do. I let it set up and then put the others in. It didn't really mess up what's here. It just messed up the design idea that I had which I'm not going to tell you about too much now because I will try it in the future. Um, although my next marbled soap is going to be going for more of a traditional marble 
look like a stone marble. Um, that'll be in a few, in I don't know, two or three weeks. Um, I'm going to work that. It'll be a similar technique to this, but a completely different look. Probably less um, layers and less stuff. Um, depending, I guess, because sometimes I just go fly by the seat of my pants. Do I like what I'm seeing? No, <laughs> add more <laughs> or add less. If you add more, it's going to, you know, you can tell as you're going. Um, sometimes, sometimes I have to stop myself. I like glitter a little too much, but um, just notice there's really not a lot to this other than noticing. Oh, see here. Now there's a little bit to tell you. See how it's, it's got that like a skin or a web across the top and I'm pouring more to make it a little bit more movable. You don't want to mess with pulling that, that everywhere, that skin everywhere. I mean, you can, it's a different look. You're going to get a lot of like spider web look kind of, if you want that, go for it. Um, you'll have more bubbles, you'll have more wrinkles, etc. which I think look fine and cool within a galaxy soap. It kind of, it gives it some really neat dimension. Might look like some stars are streaking across the sky or across the space scape. I don't know. <laughs> But um, for, uh, you saw I stopped trying to move it and just kind of patted it a little because I wanted to make sure that the mica that was on top got under the hot soap. And that when that wasn't working properly, I poured more soap. Keep in mind, the top layers of this, meaning after the first layer that I poured at like 123, 122, now I'm pouring hot. So every other layer that you've seen me pour um, it's about one, between 130 and 135. Um, 133 is like the goal, the, the perfect, um, temperature, basically the aiming. But, um, since I'm pouring more than one layer at once, because I pour, put some mica in, in various ways, you see that some of that was mixed in with, uh, rubbing alcohol and some of it was just mica slung around a little bit and some was mixed in soap if you saw the anything I put in a pipette that was mica with rubbing alcohol only and anything in a one of the little uh, mad mica cups those little tiny silicone white cups that was mica with soap and of course anything with the little stick that you saw me slinging around was just mica or in or um some type of soap friendly glitter um, and the, uh, and biodegradable of some kind or earth friendly depending I try to get the best kind that I can for all of us and um, not using the stuff with a lot of uh, icky stuff in it that we don't need um, so <laughs> for the next few minutes you're gonna see me cutting um, I'm not great at it. Um, I want you to notice, I, I did speed it up quite a bit because I take my time. So you're gonna see a lot of wobbles. I promise you, because it's so sped up, you're not seeing me shaking. Like it looks like, um, this one doesn't, isn't too bad. But um, some of them look like I'm shaking and I'm really, I'm not. I'm just adjusting it until I know that it's exactly where I want it. And sometimes that takes a little bit for me. Um, I want to make sure it's exactly where I want it before I press that knife through. Um, again, you can get rid of marks if you, if you have to move it a little, but by a little, I mean like, you know, 16th of an inch, eighth of an inch at the most, because that's about, um, trying to, maybe the, the peeler I use takes off maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch maybe at times or somewhere in between a 16th and an eighth. Um, if you have a lighter hand with it, it's more toward one 16th of an inch. Um, and if you're heavy handed with it, it's a little more like an eighth, maybe a little bit more than that. So, um, yeah, again, that can take off some of those little marks from the, um, knife. It also removes, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention back when I had this in the mold and it was set up, I didn't show you because um, I forgot, honestly, to start the camera up again or have 
have um, Mr. Soapy start the camera up again. But I took my knife and made the marks in the mold. And the reason I did that is because it, while it's difficult to see on camera, my soap mold comes with marks on the sides that help me kind of guide that. And so that's what I'm using. I will say the one I bought, and it is, you know, it wasn't a super expensive one. It was um, when I bought on Amazon. I couldn't even tell you the name of the brand or anything. Um, there was one mark missing that I just kind of have to guess. <laughs> really not guess because you can, you know, measure and divide it in two between the two. Um, but it's just a little bit more of a pain than just marking it with a knife. Um, and it's just the one spot. But um, you have to mark all the sides before you remove it from the mold if you want to keep the if you want that size bar anyway um back to size of bars and amounts and stuff like that. that's the reason I don't give you much about the amounts of anything I'm using um because it's going to depend on how thick you like your soap bars I actually these these were thicker than the soap that I made with this uh, the earlier soap I made with this technique early on I did a, a nebula soap using all of the um, uh, micas in the Nebula series of uh, that Mad Micas had out um, because I loved all those colors together. But I wanted to try one with more um, traditional kind of galaxy colors and um, wanted to play more with the marbling, the layered marbling technique. Um, and I'm not sure how well I described that, but it's... I pour hot soap, thin amount of hot soap, sprinkle on whatever micas or drizzle or pour with soap. I tried to do one of each in each layer um, and do them quickly and then pour more soap on top to break up those colors. And you saw with the drier micas, I tended to also try to streak those around a little bit, which is why I do those first because those need a little bit more movement to break up. Um, but then when, when I get that other clear layer on top that moves them, then I let it set up completely. So that's why I'm using hot soap. It's fully set up. You don't need to make scratches in it or anything. If the soap is hot enough, it's not going to melt it um, enough to harm anything, especially if you don't pour right in one spot. You see, I move the pitcher around quite a bit. Um, it probably wouldn't really do anything in these soaps anyway because, you know, at most you'd have a little bit of an extra little bit of mica floating around. I mean, these are so abstract. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. But just to keep in mind that technique works if you move your pitcher around and don't pour in one spot. Kind of like, and you could also use, if you wanted to use a spatula to help break the fall of it, but I'd still, if I did that, I'd still move it around. It's not going to break through anything because the the layer underneath is fully set up. That's why I don't why I don't tend to do that with these. I love the way these come out. I hope you can see the little rings. There's one that shows up pretty well. Not all of them had one. Like I said, I was kind of experimenting with that look. Um, what I wanted to do was something else, and I will try it down the road. But I think I do think they came out really cool, and I love that they showed up. I wasn't even sure they were going to show up. I was just kind of um, pulling a Hail Mary to try to save the soap because there was a very big mess up that I didn't show in here. And I may make a separate video for that. I'm not sure. I am considering doing a membership um, type thing where you can sign up to um, and pay a small amounts uh, to see things like that. Things that don't necessarily matter for the technique of the soap. I don't want to kind of gate, gatekeep my design ideas and stuff like that. But I might have some little special things for members if that is something. And I've been asked a couple of times, which is why I was considering it. Um, I don't know if you can tell on the camera here. When you move these soaps, you see so many different colors. Each angle is a different color, a different look. The light catches these in different different ways as you move them. And I don't think the camera fully captures it. Um, 
it's so cool. Uh, it, it's like you're looking at a different soap when you move the angles or like it's one, it's definitely very three dimensional, almost reminds me of those little, I don't know, postcards they used to have back in the days with those really, it had a clear layer on it, but with lines on it and you'd move it and it would change the picture. I have no idea what they're called. <laughs> um, but they looked that, that they don't look like this, but they kind of moved like this. And the colors would shift, etc. Now their entire picture would change. Mine, it just picks up on different aspects of what's already there. Um, I uh, really was happy um, with the whole look overall. Um, I feel like it was different enough from the Nebula Soap to go ahead and, and do this. And the next marbled one that you see is going to be completely different. Because again, it's going to look like a stone. Um, and that will be coming soon and along with some other marbling and swirling stuff down the road I have planned. Um, if you are getting anything from this, any tips, any tricks, or just inspiration, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. It is really helpful and I did, you know, I look into my metrics a little bit and see what's happening and it does show that 60% of my regular of my watchers or views I should say my my views come from non-subscribers which there is nothing wrong with that you don't you're not obligated to subscribe but I certainly appreciate it if you would if you've watched especially if you've watched more than one or two videos and you like my channel and you like my style of teaching um, it would certainly help me a lot to to grow my channel and that helps other people to see my material and help them to also learn uh, more about Melton Pour or to be inspired perhaps by some of my design work. Um, I do consider myself an artist first before a soap maker because I've been kind of an artist my entire life. It's just who I am and the soap making has only been about four years. <laughs> Maybe creeping up on five now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, four years for sure. No, I think it is. I think it's four and a half. Not that that matters. <laughs> but um, anyway, if you if you'd like to subscribe, please do. If you want to know when the upcoming videos are, which they're usually going to be Wednesday or Thursday. I'm really trying hard to get better at the consistency of that. But life gets in the way. And, um, and then I usually put out a short um Friday or Saturday the weekend usually and um, if you sub uh, uh, sorry if you subscribe then and you want to see everything click the notification bell and that will help you find my stuff you'll get a notification every time I put out new content and if you do subscribe but you don't want to see all that it's annoying you don't have to click the notifications if those bother you um, but in just subscribing you'll at least have my channel on hand and be able to find my stuff fairly easily I do post in many of the Facebook soap groups and some of a couple of those will uh, feature my stuff at the top I'm going to do a video someday on how to find all of that and how to find the description box because uh, it's hard to find sometimes I thank you for your time um, I appreciate every single one of you, your comments, your likes, your watches, your shares, and your support. You have been um, fabulous. I'm coming up on a year anniversary soon, and I thank you so, so much for, um, for being a part of my first year as a YouTuber and as a soap teacher, I guess. <laughs> soap educator, I don't know. Soap designer, I have no idea. Um, what to call myself there but you've been so helpful and supportive and I just want to thank you um, that is a, oh no I do have a few more I do show you every single soap in this one because they're so individual and unique I wanted you to get a good look at them um, not great at the photography and of things so the colors are a little wonky on some of them but uh, they're pretty true to color they might be a little more vibrant in person but um, I'm hoping that you did find something useful in here please if I left something out 
it, or if I left something, um, sometimes I interrupt myself, like just there. If I uh, interrupted myself and didn't finish a sentence or didn't finish a thought, please comment. Um, I'm happy to answer questions and happy to help you in your journey with creating melt and pour soaps and uh, melt and pour soap art. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.